Okay. All right. So this evening, or actually late afternoon, we finally are able to come out to our garden again. The weather is giving us a sunny day, dry day. We're having a couple of those now until the weekend when more rain will come. <coughs> but we had have have had a lot of tornadoes and rain here in Iowa lately. This is the end of May. So we were. We're grateful, though, that before all that crazy weather, we were able to put the potatoes and onions and peas in the ground. So, as you can tell, they're doing really well. And this is what they did look like. <coughs> but what we've been doing today is we've been cutting the tops off of them so they're back to this size. And the reason that you do that, we learned this a couple years ago, was then they, the plant thinks that there's no seed on it anymore, so it's able to focus on growing the onion bigger. So you get bigger bulbs of onion. So you want like big ones. You don't want like a whole lot of little ones. Now, last year, I think it was last year or the year before, we kept the green parts of the onions and we froze them to use them. But there's a lot, of course, as you can tell. So this year we're not going to do that because we also use the onions. So we just didn't use that much so of the greens. But you can, they are freezable and you can use them again. Or you can eat them. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, so... We do this to get the bigger onions. And then, then as we do that, we are also taking the dirt away from the top of the onion. Not all the way, but just you want to air it out. You're trying to look at the sun to get to that bulb of the onion because that way it dries it out a little bit and keeps it from rotting away. Because if it's packed in with, especially when you have a lot of rain, now if this was a dry year, it would be different. But that this is a wet year, so we need to open it up, let the air and sun get into that to not let those onions rot. Because there's been times where we have not done that or we didn't think it was that wet and when we're pulling our, picking our onions, a lot of them were rotted because of it just sat in that damp soil. So this is airing them out, kind of rejuvenating them to start now with the bottom and get the bulbs bigger. So now, here is our last little bit right here that we're going to do. So Hannah, you want to get the scissors? So I've been weeding. Me and my husband have been weeding. Hannah has been cutting. Now, some of them though, that, that little bunch right there, see this part is going to be where the seeds of your onion are. This is what happens. So now those are red ones right here. And so now they're not ready, they don't have seeds in them yet, but we're keeping those because we want to save the seeds to start our own onion sets this year. That was our one thing that last, um, we did not start uh, in the greenhouse was onions. We bought the onion sets, but we want to try that. So we're going to save the seeds, but they're not ready yet. So that's why we did not cut the tops off of this. Now, yellow and white onions weren't doing this yet. So they're going to regrow and then they will set the seeds at the top and we will save those once they're ready. But that's why those couple, you might ask, why didn't you cut those? That is the reason because we want to save the seeds. And if you ever see that on top of an onion, that's what that is going to become where you get the seeds of an onion. Because of course, at the bottom, you don't get the seeds. So, but also another way that you can reproduce onions or let them, is to just leave them in the ground. So if you have like, if you, so like if we planted all these and we're actually doing this with some that we had planted in the orchard up there, we're gonna just leave them and then they will just come back, you know, through, the bulb and also their own seeds and then they'll fall in the ground and things like that. So there's a lot of ways that you can grow onions. So I've been weeding and Hannah has been um, cutting the tops. So now when we started, when we started this today, <laughs> well, I was. that was a big one. That was a humongous weed next to that onion. That's crazy. Nice growing with the onion. Yes. Um, so when we started this today, I really was not motivated to do this. I, when my husband asked me to help him, I was like, ugh. But then he got me thinking, and I got to thinking about what the Bible says, and which is, and Hannah told me too, that, you know, if the Bible says multiple times, work as though you work for the Lord, not for man. So you need to put all your heart into your work, no matter what you're doing, every day. If it's your job, if it's this, whatever you're doing, you need to put all your heart into it 
and work as though you're working for God. And that really helps and makes, and it's the truth. So, you know, it makes you feel like you're doing a good purpose and things like that. So, and you know, my husband, he didn't really want to come into this because this is a mess. It, as you can see, and that, look, now this is funny too. Over here, we planted potatoes, right? This was organized planting. Well, then, you know, all the rain came, the tornadoes. So we haven't been in here for weeks. I mean, upon weeks. And then we find out, look at all those free tomato potatoes. I mean, that were just came up from last year. We didn't even pick them last year. So now we have all that mess over there. So that's not really organized planting over there because it's a there's some jungle. It is. Because it's a little here. bit, a little bit, a little bit. And that was supposed to be our area for cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, um, uh, watermelon, cantaloupe, right? But now that's taking up a lot of space. So we're going to have to really rethink this. And, and like you can tell, it's a mess. So it's just with like with life, right? Sometimes you have a mess, but you cannot let that get you down. You just have to continue. Oh, Hannah, you can be on this side cutting, remember, because of the potatoes. Come in front of, oh, right here. Um, just like with life, you know, like I said, don't let the mess get you down. Don't let it get you discouraged. You just have to keep working at it with your whole heart and, um, and and it will make a difference for sure and it will make you feel you know God will work through through you to do good things oh, I'll get the weeds of that in one second yeah and so um, yeah and also another thing that is very comparable with gardening and with life and with Bible life biblical life is that you reap what you sow. So we plant these seeds or these, you know, potatoes and onions and things like that. And we are able to put the seed in the ground. Just like with people and our relationship with people trying to lead them to Jesus. We tell them about Jesus. We tell them about the good news. His, you know, his God's love, things like that. But then, of course, we cannot force people to make that decision. And everybody individually has to make the decision to follow God on their own. Even though, I mean, that is, if you want to have a, a if you want to have eternal life, you know, you, you're going to have to choose now to follow God. You can't wait. It's not, there's no time to wait, right? And so, it's just like, you know, God is the one who makes us grow. We don't make it grow. Here, I'm going to get the weeds over here. We don't make it grow. We just plant the seed. So our job with people as well is to plant the seed of the gospel into their hearts. Talk to them about Jesus. Talk to them about his love and God's forgiveness and kindness and mercy and grace. And then pray that they will make the right decision. And then God will be faithful and make them grow in Jesus just like he makes the plants grow in the dirt, right? And then you will have a great harvest at the end of the season just as will be a great harvest when Jesus comes back for us. So it really is, you know, God makes that so good a comparison in that. And it, it, it really helps us understand. It helps me understand it a lot better. He gives me that. He gives me his wisdom through doing things like this. And number one, reading the Bible is where I've been getting a lot of my wisdom lately from him. I've been learning a lot from doing that, which is makes me feel really joyful, and it makes everything make sense too. So I, I mean, it just really does. And so if you ha if you don't read your Bible, I really would. Um, advise or recommend. Here, here, look at that worm. <laughs> I found a worm in the dirt. Which is in the heat doing his job. God made him to do his job in the dirt. It helps the vegetables grow. So we'll leave him back in there. He does his job. We'll put him back under the dirt so he doesn't get hot from the sun. Yeah. But um, but I would I would definitely recommend um. 
people, you know, to read their Bible, learn about God as much as you can because it's so important. It's so important. And you will, you will find out when you read your Bible that God really demands that of every individual to read their Bible and to know their Bible so then they can live their life according to that, which is God's Word. And I never knew that before. I never knew those words were in there. But now that I read it, I have found it, and it gives you a new outlook and a new, you know, it just, it changes your life. So, for the better, of course. But, so that is your comparison today of biblical living and gardening. So, I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you will look into reading your Bible and check back to see what we do with our potatoes. Bye!